Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be reviewing and comparing each of the Heavy Assault Shield Generators, that's the Nanite Mesh Generator, the Adrenaline Shield, and the Resist Shield. All three are very good, but are good in different ways, and they all seem to cater to slightly different playstyles and have different price points as well. So hopefully by the end of this episode you'll be able to tell exactly which Shield Generator is going to be the best for you. So first let's break down what every Overshield has in common with one another in a broad sense and then we'll dig into each of them with more detail. I've got to warn you though that the format of this episode is going to be kind of messy because we're going to be comparing two things that are very similar and one thing that's very different, so we'll be jumping around a little bit. Regardless of which shield you're using, they all serve the same goal of keeping you alive by mitigating incoming damage. The Nanite Mesh Generator and the Adrenaline Shield do this by completely stopping a certain amount of incoming damage, whereas the Resist Shield mitigates a percentage of that incoming damage. Your Overshield will make you glow your faction's specific color, so blue for NC, red for TR, and teal for VS, and I think pretty much everybody understands that, but there is also a bug where sometimes in the first person view, if you have your shield active, it's not going to show for you, even though it is there, it is draining down, but enemies are going to see you glowing regardless. While active, mesh generators are going to give you a 25% movement speed penalty, which is the biggest downside of turning your overshield on in the first place. When your basic shields drop, so the 500 shields on top of your normal 500 health, it takes 10 seconds before they start recharging. Now with your heavy shield active, the 10 second countdown is still going to happen in the background, but your actual shield regen is not going to kick in until you turn off your overshield. So likewise, if you're currently regenerating your basic shields, if you activate your overshield, that recharge is just going to stop happening. And uh, this is actually the same thing that happens for the infiltrator's cloak as well. On the plus side, if you completely block the damage of an incoming attack with your overshield, your normal shield regeneration is still going to count down in the background. So normally if you take damage while your shields are down or even uh, mid regeneration, that 10 second countdown gets reset. But if you're using uh, an MG or an adrenaline shield and block out the incoming damage entirely, then that countdown is still just going to continue in the background even though you've gotten hit and it's not going to stop that for you. If your overshield is broken by damage or the energy just runs completely dry, there seems to be a small window before it starts regenerating again and that lasts about 3 seconds. Whereas if you still have juice in your shield, it's going to start regenerating instantly. Mesh generators will also absorb fall and run over damage, or at least a portion of it, and the resist shield is going to dampen the fall damage instead of absorbing it outright. At one point, I'm not sure which game update it was, but Flak Armor did not reduce the damage taken to your overshield, it was actually a change that they implemented, so regardless of whether you had Flak Armor on or not, your overshield would still take the full damage from an explosive round. But Flak Armor seems to be mitigating explosives again now uh, on against your overshield. So whether this is a, a mistake that just kind of slipped by or got reverted somehow, or uh, and whether it's going to be changed again in the future, I really can't say. But at this moment in time, Flak Armor does reduce damage to your overshield. The last thing as far as generalities go is that your hitbox modifiers do affect your shield. So if you get hit in the leg, you're going to take 90% of the damage that you would have if you got hit in the chest. And if you get hit in the head, you're going to take two times as much damage, or whatever the headshot multiplier of the weapon is. So that's how things work from a general standpoint between all the shield generators. Now let's take a look at them each individually. The Nanite Mesh Generator is the starting heavy assault shield. Regardless of which faction you're on, that's the one you get. It's going to cost 1, 10, 30, 50, 150, and 500 certs to unlock all ranks, and it is the most inexpensive cert line as far as heavy shields go. The Nanite Mesh Generator, which we're just going to call the NMG, technically should absorb up to 650 damage total, but it has an activation cost of around 43.33 energy, so you're really only capable of protecting yourself from about 607 damage. The shield is going to drain over time, but it's also going to drop in chunks with each hit that you take, and that's equivalent to the amount of damage that you would receive. So if you get hit with a single shot of a 143 damage carbine, your overshield's health is going to drop by 143. 
If you do not get hit with anything at all and your shield stays active, it's going to be active for up to 15 seconds. So if your overshield has 650 health, you're bleeding off about 43 shield health per second. So every 3 seconds or so, you're losing about a bullet's worth of damage that you could be taking. At rank 1, your NMG recharges over 60 seconds, or 10.83 shields per second. At rank 2, it's 57 seconds, or 11.4 shields per second. At rank 3, you have 54 seconds, 12.04 shields per second. At rank 4, it's 51 seconds, and gives you 12.75 shields per second. At rank 5, it's 48 seconds, and 13.51 shields per second. And at rank 6, it's going to regen at 45 seconds, which is the equivalent of 14.44 shields per second. Stay alert! Enemy heavy nearby! So at the very maximum rank, assuming you have a 143 damage carbine to the chest, you can absorb one more bullet about every 9.9 .9 seconds. And at minimum rank against the same carbine, you can absorb one more bullet at about every 13.2 seconds. So between minimum and maximum rank, the difference in regeneration time is small, but it is somewhat consequential. The Nanite Mesh Generator is recommended first and foremost for anyone on a limited cert budget or who doesn't play the Heavy Assault class a lot. It's recommended for anybody who can flick on the shield just before receiving a burst of damage, and it's not recommended for extended fights because your shield drains over time. So the longer the fight, the less effective your shield is going to become. And it's also for those types of players who have well-paced playstyles. So you're not always running in and racking up kills and then dying, you're probably the type of player who can sit back with everybody else, providing some covering fire or taking on enemy vehicles. The Adrenaline Shield is very similar to the NMG from a protection standpoint, but has one huge difference. You get back energy when you kill people. Adrenaline Shield is going to run you 150, 200, 400, 500, and 1000 certs. So that's 2,250 certs total if you are unlocking the whole line, and that's extremely, extremely expensive compared to the standard NMG, or even the resist shield, which we'll talk about later. The adrenaline shield functions the same way that the NMG does. It provides 603 effective shields due to the activation cost, which is 43.33, though the energy reserve is technically that same 650, and it will also deplete as time passes. Just like the NMG, if you're not getting hit, it will stay on for 15 seconds total. And at all ranks, the Adrenaline Shield is going to regenerate over 60 seconds, or 10.83 shields per second. So it does the exact same thing as the standard Nanite Mesh Generator at rank 1, except that the Adrenaline Shield can also regain energy from kills. So at rank 1, you're going to restore 4.5% of your energy, which is the equivalent of 29.25 shields. And at rank 2, it's 6%, which is the equivalent of 39 shields. At rank 3, it's 10%, which is 65 shields. At rank 4, it's 15%, or 97.5 shields. And at rank 5, it's going to restore 20% of your energy, which is the equivalent of 130 shields. And that's definitely a huge difference from rank 1 to rank 5. So ranking up the ability is uh, it's going to reward you a lot. And just for comparison's sake, if you have a max rank NMG, which restores 14.44 energy per second, and a rank 1 Adrenaline Shield, which restores 10.83 energy per second passively, uh, you need to kill one person every 8 seconds in order to keep up with the shield regeneration of a max NMG. Now, if there's a max NMG and you have max rank Adrenaline Shield, you're only going to need to kill one person every 36 seconds in order to keep up with that same regeneration rate that the NMG is providing. And that's, uh, that's more than reasonable for most experienced players in bigger fights. And even better is that you can top off your adrenaline shield while it's active. So you can essentially erase the initial activation cost, which uh, gives you the potential to use the full 650 effective health that should be provided but isn't due to that 43 energy uh, activation cost. So as you can probably tell, this is practically a straight improvement over the standard Nanite Mesh Generator, provided you're killing enemies every once in a while, and it becomes a lot more powerful with each rank. Any type of kill except for teammates or equipment is going to give you an instant recharge effect, so infantry, max units, vehicles, base turrets, 
It also takes into account any method of killing enemies. So if you use a rocket, you use a knife, you use C4, or even if you're running people over, you're going to charge your shield. And I believe it also works if you're in the gunner's seat of a vehicle, but, uh, but don't quote me on that. Also, if you kill a group of enemies at the same time, they all count toward your recharge. So if you kill an MBT with two people sitting inside, that's three kills, and you're going to regen your shield a lot. Assists, however, do absolutely nothing to recharge your shield. It has to absolutely be a kill. Also, there is a bug where you occasionally will not get shield recharge when you kill an enemy, and it happens every once in a while. At least uh, it's enough to notice, but I'm not sure exactly what's triggering it. And I think it's a random occurrence rather than, uh, say, a limiter on how often you can trigger the effect. And lastly, the shield will gain kill regeneration whether you're actively using it or not. So whether it's on or off, it doesn't matter. It's still going to fill up the bar provided you get a kill. The adrenaline shield is recommended for anyone who can kill single or multiple enemies at the same time, usually in close quarters. And it's also recommended for bigger battles where there are a lot of targets on the field at any given time because you do need a target-rich environment in order to kind of keep up with the NMG's shield regeneration. It's also recommended for those just like the NMG who can flick the shield on just before receiving a great amount of burst damage. And also it's very synergetic when using a high capacity weapon or a weapon with a low time to kill so that you can keep that regeneration up. It's also for someone who has a lot of certs to invest in making it good. I generally find that it's more useful than the less expensive NMG, starting at rank 3, but below that the enhanced regeneration from the NMG is oftentimes preferred. The resist shield operates a bit differently than the other two in that it grants a flat damage reduction instead of completely absorbing incoming damage. So it's going to cost you 50, 100, 150, 200, and 500 certs, so less than the adrenaline shield and more than the NMG. And instead of stopping that incoming damage, it's going to reduce it by 45%. And unlike other overshields, the maximum duration does not decrease when you get hit. It just drains steadily while the shield is active. On that same coin, there is next to no activation cost for flicking it on and off. Each rank of resist shield is going to increase the duration of the shield while indirectly increasing its regeneration rate, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But rank 1, the shield is going to last for 6 seconds. Rank 2 is 7 seconds, rank 3 is 8 seconds, rank 4 is 9 seconds, and rank 10 is a 10 second duration. The interesting thing is that the resist shield regenerates over 17 seconds regardless of rank. So at rank 1 you're regenerating the equivalent of 0.35 seconds of active duration every second. At uh, rank 2 it's 0.41 duration. At rank 3 it's 0.47 duration. At rank 4 it's 0.52 duration and at rank 5 it's 0.59 duration every second. So it's not a massive change in regeneration rate, but it's still worthwhile, especially for the low cert cost. The regeneration shield, despite having the shortest duration, ends up having the most uptime as the regeneration rate is just so quick, coupled with the low or non-existent activation cost. You can flick it on, you can flick it off whenever you need it, and it's still going to give you the full damage decreasing effect, and that's very different than the other mesh generators, which are only useful depending on how much charge they have available. The resist shield isn't. That's what makes it really awesome. But unlike other mesh generators, flak armor has zero effect on resist shield. Instead, the highest value resistance is going to win out. So if you have a 25% damage reduction from flak armor and your resist shield blocks 45% damage, that's what's going to take precedence. But if you have maxed out flak armor, which prevents 50% explosive damage, then that is going to take priority over your resist shield. Because the resist shield mitigates damage taken opposed to a set amount, it's very synergetic with nanoweave armor and with max nanoweave, so rank 5, you're going to get 250 extra health. And it's not 125, like a lot of people still think it does. So having your resist shield up with max nanoweave armor equipped is going to give you 1812.5 effective health. That's over the 1,650 potential that any other nanite mesh generator is going to give you. The resist shield is best used before you start getting shot because your health and your shields are essentially your fuel. And if you want to make the most out of it, you want to activate it before turning the corner or before that tank opens fire on you. The resist shield is recommended for players who generally fight at range. 
where shots are being exchanged periodically opposed to the big bursts of damage in close quarters fights. But it's also a great all-round shield regardless of playstyle, and it's obviously useful in stand-up fights as well, just like any other generator. But the trade-off is that you are going to be taking some damage before the enemy dies, whereas with a mesh generator you have the potential to not take any damage at all, provided you can kill your target quickly enough. It's recommended for players who know when damage is coming and can activate their shield before taking any of it. Because remember that your health are your shields, they're your fuel, they're very very important. And because of that, it's also recommended for players who use a lot of healing utility slots or have medics on hand to heal. Because even in a one-on-one -on -one fight, you're going to end up taking some health damage and you want to be able to restore that as quickly as possible. And lastly, it's also recommended for people who don't want to invest heavily in Adrenaline Shield, but still want a different mechanic than the standard NMG at a very reasonable price. As far as general strategy goes, to recap some old points but also throw in some new ones, the NMG and the Adrenaline Shield are most useful when fights are very short, or when you're instantly going to be taking a burst of damage. So if you know that the tank is about to lob a high explosive shell your way, you shield, and then you mitigate that damage. But if you're in an extended firefight with somebody else, you're bleeding the life of your shield out every second. And to kind of recap and expand on that, if you're fighting a 143 damage carbine from close range, every 3 seconds or so that your shield generator is on, you're losing the ability to block one of those bullets. So it's very, very important to keep your fights short. For resist shield, your health and regular shields are your fuel, so before you turn a corner, before you start getting picked apart by bullets from distance, you want that shield on. But because the movement speed penalty, turning on your overshield is also a good way to get you killed, and because of that, you want to be smart about when you turn your overshield on. And here are some quick examples to think about. When you're going up a staircase, turning a corner, breaching a door, you should turn your shield on. These are great places for uh, people to drop proximity mines, so especially if you aren't running flak armor, you do want to shield before you do any of those things. Also before and just after you start running for cover, but turn it off as soon as you're running for cover if the cover is nearby. And you could flick it on and off if you want, especially in an open field with a long way to go before you reach safety, but you do not want to just leave it on unless you know your shield is going to hold out until you reach cover. And this actually has a lot to do with how our brain processes information and uh, how we acquire moving targets, but I'm not going to get into that because it is kind of complex and worth a video in itself. Don't give away your position by turning on your shield. In other words, when it's dark or when the enemy might not see you, you don't want to turn on your shields just for kicks, you don't want to turn them on just uh, when you start shooting at somebody, because it's much easier to see where the glowing guy is than to track where the projectiles are coming from, especially if you're occasionally hiding behind rocks and if you're using a flash suppressor. The other side of the coin is that you can always try to draw attention to yourself by turning on your shield. This has uh, some limited application where you can try to keep teammates from dying, because remember that you can't see enemy health bars past 10 meters anymore, so if you have a teammate who is almost dead, you can flick your shield on and try to draw some fire as they run into cover and heal up. But that is about it, I think. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. And if you have anything else you'd like to add about mesh generators or some strategies you'd like to offer, please feel free to leave a comment or a video response below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.